What brings you to Ghana? I think t two things really. I think sports and uh, rediscovering my West African roots. What food have you tried so far? I tried the jollof last night, but authentic jollof for the first time, yeah. Hello and welcome to another edition of Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Joseph Adamafi and today I'm here with a former Chelsea player who won their Champions League with them way back as far as 2012. He got the opportunity to play with some of Ghana's very own players like Michael Asian among the likes of other African players like Didier Drogba. Well, lately, some Ghanaian players have been doing tremendously well in the Premier League. We get to know if he's monitoring them and what also brings him to Ghana. Veteran, welcome. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Good, man. Nice good. having you. What brings you to Ghana? Um, I think t two things, really. I think sports and uh, in, in general and also just part of me, you know, kind of rediscovering my West African roots, to be honest. So I get to uh, fulfillment, but also get to achieve purpose through sports, hopefully, with our projects going forward. Wow. This is the first time learning that you have West African roots. Where to be precise? Um, so to be honest, my, um, I'm a diasporan, so it's ultimately, you know, my roots come back to West Africa from my grandparents, which I'm, you know, slowly developing. I think it's through, you know, Nigeria, Ghana, and uh, Cote d'Ivoire around these areas. So, oh, okay. Yeah, well, more around the West, yeah. <laughs> so, as you can imagine, probably for another time to go into the deeper story around it. But um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to you know coming back and and uh, really engaging with the communities of Africa. But ever since you came, how has the experience been? I know you've, not, you've been here for a little while, but how has the experience been so far? It's been amazing. Um, everything that uh, a lot of my Ghanaian friends have told me, um, from the moment we got off the plane, the reception so, you know, so warming and, and uh, welcoming that, you know, it's been great since then. Mm. Do you ever contact any of your former teammates or any Ghanaian player in, you knew before coming to Ghana? Um, I spoke briefly with Essien a mm -hmm. bit, but uh, my friends at uh, Copan, you know, were, you know, well versed in the landscape of uh, of Ghana. So yeah, I trusted, you know, my friends, and here I am today. Yeah, with Copman, um, tell us what's your partnership with them. We want to know more about you and what you are dealing into. Yeah, so I think it it stemmed from friendship first, okay. friendship and values, our values align. Um, I would like to do my part for, you know, in West Africa to help, you know, develop sports and to use sports as a purpose to help develop communities as well. So going forward from that, you know, they have a fantastic sporting project currently. So first of all, it's about me coming and listening, you know, and engaging with, you know, communities and the guys and seeing where I can add value and help out. So going forward, it'd be an evolving uh, project. Okay, so what's the project called? Because I'm learning of FA Sports and Copman Agency. Yeah. Can you... So, so um, I helped found and I just advise with a sports agency in the UK called FA Sport. Okay. Um, and Copan obviously do the same. And where we have shared values because I know both parties, you know, it's okay, how can we combine and create synergies and help possibly discover more talents, um, use football as a tool together to engage with communities and, and develop you know, society as well as providing pathways for players. Okay. Now, what do you look out for when identifying players? Mm. Um, I think when you know, identifying players, it's, you know, the statistics are great. But I think everybody can see statistics if someone scores 10 goals <laughs> um, or a hat-trick. But realistically, I'm looking for moments, you know, moments of one commitment and desire to play for their team. But also just the moments, you know, the key real high level moments that immediately I can recall and I've seen from 
other legendary players or in specific moments that I believe is a real, real elite level talent that can show. It could be anything from a turn, a touch, a weight of pass, uh, a particular moment of the game, how they handled it, and just looking for these little moments. And then once you see them moments, then you'll look a bit deeper. Yeah, yeah. when you say all this moment and traits, um, you made mention that it's easy to identify someone who is a striker, maybe they score goals, these are statistics which helps them mm -hmm. get out there, but identifying someone like a defender or a midfielder, mm -hmm. how difficult is it knowing yeah. that they don't have to score goals, maybe tackles, maybe passes and yeah, all that? So it comes down to, for me, I'm fortunate in terms of, I use pattern recognition a lot where I've seen many players at the elite level day in, day out, played with and played against. Okay. So when I see them traits, whether it's a, a midfielder showing uh, for the ball, not just showing for the ball, but showing for the ball at the right time, when the opponent's ready, when your teammate's ready to pass, sometimes people can show too early, mm. or sometimes people can show too late. Yeah. But sometimes it's the timing of the movement. So you look at more attributes to find in the top players. Now, what advice will you give to an up-and-coming footballer who is looking up to you, has watched you and the Premier League, they monitor other players in the Premier League, but they feel like it's far away from them. The African continent is detached from the European football. You have to work yourself up all the way from the grassroots mm -hmm. to maybe the National League level before you can get the attention of maybe big clubs or big um, agents, yeah. what will you advise them to do? Yeah, you have to stay, stay committed. You have to stay, you know, you have to believe that it will come one day also. And yeah, you have to stay just committed, work on your craft and just keep working. Or don't, don't get, be distracted by any of the extracurricular activities that might happen as you get older, because I feel if you get older, there's still, you're still young. You know, people can, might think you need to be 18, gone to Europe or something. There's plenty of time still, but the focus can sometimes become tougher, I feel, for a younger player because the older you get, the more activities you are labeled, enable you to do. So can you retain that focus? Mm -hmm. And if you do that, retain that focus in crucial stages, then I'm sure you'll push through. Now, looking at um, your era and looking at this era, you may want to say sometimes it's hard for you to get um, international recognition, but the, um, the introduction or emergence of social media has given a platform for players to have their own uh, kind of media files on their mm -hmm. profiles or accounts before they even blossom to become big players. Do you think they should take advantage of social media where they play maybe five-a-side football growing up from age seven to even grow their profile? Yeah, definitely. I think the modern-day footballer is a brand, you yeah. know, more than ever. So one thing is you don't need to be on social media showing all the skills, but if you can use social media to show you know, your games, how you're good, what you do, what you achieve, and to show yourself, that's a definite platform that you can put yourself on for exposure. And technology is a, technology can help Africa on Earth a lot more talents than it already does. Okay, I see that. I'm sure definitely once you're in Ghana, you've been monitoring Ghanaian football. What are your thoughts on the development of football in Ghana? Um, yeah, so, I think the team in itself is in a little bit of a transition, but it's got some fantastic players that, that, that are in there now and been key to some of the last performances. Um, in Kudus and Ernest, I think they're two fantastic players coming through. And that's testimony to the, to the organisation, how they're recruiting and how they're developing. But also, you know, you've got people like Right to Dream here that are you know, doing a fantastic job for for providing pathways, not even in a, not just in a sporting sense, mm -hmm. but as an academic sense. Yeah. So, you know, the more of these uh, pathways, but with purpose, for good-hearted people with the right intentions, can only mean uh, good things going forward. Aside Kudus and NSMM, we also have the likes of 
party coming up. Uh, do you think we've been able to produce enough talent out there in terms of for the uh, global market? Yeah, and I think it's it's more it's positioning, and I think also one thing I would coming back to the earlier point with players, it's not always go straight to the to the to the biggest and coolest club. You have to think of your steps as pathways. Okay. You know, so you want to play at the next level where you can still play your game and, and develop and keep going well. If you sometimes make a jump too high, that can actually harm your development. Oh, okay. So you want to position yourself in a place where is a challenge, is the next step, but you can still flourish and develop there. All right. What, saying that um, it makes me um, go back to the question, like you're an 18 year old and let's say Chelsea comes for, for you or let's say um, Manchester City or one of the big clubs mm -hmm. come for you, but you know you're 18 years, you're going to meet other players who are their prime 25 years mm -hmm. and you have a mid-table club coming for you. Mm -hmm. Would you advise players to certainly for that mid-table club where they will get more playing time instead of going to the big clubs? Yeah, I think early? I think on the you look at it black and white. You can say, oh, the middle club would be better, but it's not always necessarily the case. It's all depends. It's all relative to the situation. I feel, and you will only know by when you communicate with the club what plan do they have for you. You know, how are they communicating with you? Do you really feel that these people will have got your best interest in hearts to develop you? Then it's no problem going to the, the big club because also being around the best, you develop more as well in that sense. So not only just get playing time, you might have less playing time, but because you're around the best, you will learn new, new skills and abilities and moments of the game. Mm. Well, I'm looking at Ghana football. Well, what can we do to be among the elites out there? Um, what can think, we do? I think right? you can see, you can see you're, you're bearing the, the fruits of the hard work that's going on in the country. Yeah. And I think just patience. I think is, it will just be a matter of time. But patience is tough when you have so much passion and the Ghanaian fans have so much passion for their national team and want them to be the best all the time. But it's understanding transitions and being patient, but I have no doubt and they're in great hands with the manager currently, Chris Hutton, to, to nurture through the next generation. Mentioning Chris Hutton, we'll come back to that, but what do you, what do you think England is doing differently that Ghana can learn from? Um, England are kind of ahead in terms of their transition. So it's, it's probably not so much learning, but it's just understanding where Ghana is in their transition compared to where England are. So, yeah, so it's hard to compare both because there are slightly different um, transitions, I feel, in the team. Mm. I think if you let the Ghanaian squad mature for a few years, then you could probably start to... probably needs a couple more years to, to, to mature and, and develop before we, we can, um, before you can compare, really. Okay, now talking about Coach Chris Hutton, um, you mentioned him. Did you ever encounter him in the Premier League, maybe at any club level, or maybe you yeah, met him? opposition, opposition level, and you know, played against him, you know, quite a few times, and you know, was a prominent character, and lastly done a fantastic job at, at Brighton when he was there, um, and a few of friends of mine had played with him and, and, and spoke of him, so. You know, I'm fully confident in his abilities to be able to nurture this generation through. Mm. Now he came into the Black Stars, and I think this is the first time of coaching a national team and looking at the terrain and all that. It looks quite difficult. Do you think the national team, we as fans, and all have to be a little patient with him? Yeah, definitely. And, and, but it's the hardest thing in football because we're so passionate and we want to win. Um, but yeah, probably just taking a half a step back and, and, and giving time and allowing growth. Mm. England has been yearning to win the World Cup for quite some time now. We always hear it's coming home, it's coming home. At the 2022 World Cup, well, we watched the World Cup. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Morocco managed to make it to the semis. Did it come as a surprise to you? 
Um, yeah, but I think in tournament football especially, you have to be prepared for surprises. It's not always the informed team that is the most successful. It's for every given moment on that particular moment of the game. It's whoever can manage the, the, the occasion better. Yeah. But looking at the Moroccan team, mm. you think they've really developed their football to that highest level? Because they didn't start from just the men's national team. They are doing well when it comes to other... Um, yeah. I think they've had a cohesive uh, kind of strategy from the top down. Um, I haven't spoke to the, the, the association of, of Ghana or understood their, their logistics of how they're operating. Um, I'm sure they developed a really, uh, a really nice uh, centre for, um, for the Moroccan national teams to, to go to and to develop from. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure uh, the facilities that Ghana and Black Stars have. Do you have a centralised uh, base? Yeah. yeah, so the GFA or the Ghana Football Association have other, um, when you go to other regions, we have other RFAs over the regional FAs over there. Okay. Then we also have the GFA. It's not far from here though. So what they do is they communicate with them and they scout players all across the country. Then they uh, put them in the national team from the youth level all the yeah, way yeah, yeah. up there. Yeah, so that's yeah. how it is. Yes, yeah, so that's what I mean. I think they have similar processes. Just uh, hopefully, it's just a matter of time. Okay. Well, you're still watching Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV, and uh, my guest today is the former Chelsea player Rian Bertrand. For the moment, we are just talking about his time in Ghana. Then we'll zoom into when he played for Chelsea and more on uh, what he makes of the Black Stars and more. But for now, we're taking a short break, and when we return, we'll talk some more. Everyone needs the perfect snack to munch on during a fun moment. Wow. Enjoy the tasty McBerry twist cupcakes, wow. deliciously baked and packaged for a sweet treat. Mm. Premium quality cakes, baked with love for all, enriched in butter and milk. Mm, yummy. Oh, McBerry twist cupcakes. Simply irresistible. Try one today. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back from the break. My name is Joseph Adamafio, and you're still watching Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. And I'm here with Ryan Bertrand, the former Chelsea player. Ryan, in 2020 and 2010, Ghana was at the verge of making it to the semi final of the World Cup for the first time. And we got a penalty at the last minute and it was Luis Suarez. Every, everyone definitely got to know about it and as a margin <laughs> kicked the boy and unfortunately missed. At that point in time, what was running through your head? Can you tell us how you remember that particular moment? Yes, um, I think it gets played when I hear, um, I don't recall personally, but I hear through my teammates and stuff that, um, of that moment how, how pivotal it was and the frustrations of the fans as well in that particular moment. Um, but through these moments, you know, you learn. You learn and you grow. And I think there's only one place to go from that and that is, that is forward. So, like I said, slowly but surely, I'm sure you, you know, we'll, we'll develop. If you were Luis Suarez, and you were playing for England, would you have taken that decision as well? Um, <laughs> tough question. Yeah, it's a tough question. It's a tough question. It's a tough question. I, I, one thing I would say is, yeah, I can't really answer, but one thing I would say is, when you're in, the, in that moment, yeah, the on, on there, the adrenaline's going, and you're playing for your country, you know, the mind can do crazy things. <laughs> We'll just leave it there. <laughs> well, well um, among the players you played with, did you get to t play with um, Danny Welbeck in the English national team? Yeah, yeah, played with him. How was the um, how was the moment like playing with Danny Welbeck, knowing that he was from Ghana and naturalized to play for the English national mm -hmm. team? Your impressions on? Yeah, no, it was 
super nice guy, you know, a good friend, and uh, you know, was a fantastic player. Had a fantastic career, at, um, Man U, and um, still going strong for Brighton now. Yeah. You know, adding value as more of a senior player, but you know, it's testament to him. He, you know, he's still going strong. Yeah. Uh, aside from Danny Welbeck, lately we've been getting some um, Ghanaian players that we've been trying to uh, pursue. That is the GFA to come and play for the national team. That is the Black Stars. Mm -hmm. We managed to get Tariq Lamte, but we still have Edin Kitia and Callum Hudson Odway, the former Chelsea player, over there. Do you think we should still pursue these players as an FA? Definitely. I think you, sh you should do. Um, you should always, you should never close the door on, on uh, anyone, especially when you know fantastic people who come and help the country yeah. through performance. So definitely, you know, there's some you know fantastic players out there probably still need you know a little bit of time to to think and probably to they, they want to establish their game fully in Europe at a mm -hmm. domestic level. Um, and then I'm sure, you know, I'm sure it would be great if more and more of them could come and join the Black Stars for sure. Mm. Not only for Adin Ketia and um, Callum Hudson, although I'm sure definitely you've heard of Rak Sechi and others maybe during your time with Southampton or Leicester City you could have seen other players. When you look at players who maybe have grown in England but have not established contact with their um, mother country mm -hmm. in Africa, do you think maybe they should take an approach to maybe come back home if there, there's not that opportunity for countries they want to represent? Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely, they, they should do if they want to play international football and, you know, there's nothing better than representing your country, you know, whichever side of your family that lies on. Um, that's, that's an amazing achievement and for sure, I think maybe going even identifying players a lot early at the national level to maybe give, provide them a pathway to senior football a lot earlier, that could probably help as well. Mm. But what informed your decision to become a footballer growing up? Um, just natural, nothing. Um, nothing pushing me into it. I just loved it from the moment I saw it. I think because with, you know, my dad and he would, uh, you know, would just kick the ball around. And then since then, I, I just didn't leave a ball. <laughs> so yeah, I just loved it ever since. Okay. And uh, what was your biggest achievement in football till date? What has been your biggest achievement? Biggest achievement? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably say three things. Okay. Sorry. I have to put three things on there. <laughs> Let's I go. can't really separate. Mm -hmm. Actually, two. Two things. Okay. Two things are the clear biggest ones. Is one, playing, playing for your country, since we're on that topic. Okay. It was an amazing feeling. Yeah, playing at uh, Wembley for England was was amazing uh, for anyone. Uh, the Champions League as well, winning this was an uh, absolute crazy, amazing moment personally. And I think just below them probably, you know, the PFA Team of the Year that was voted in in the Premier League and getting that recognition that you know I was the best left back in the in the one of the biggest team leagues in the world. Mm. Now winning the Champions League. You made your debut in that final, and uh, that is unprecedented. Mm. How did you prepare yourself for that particular moment? You know, I think my loans earlier in my career probably, probably helped me. Although, be it the magnitude of the games and no comparison, um, there was a saying I learned that always said, uh, play the game and not the occasion. So no matter how big the game gets, try and understand that it's just another game of football. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not, but you have to try and, as much yeah, as you can, yeah. focus and just be like, it's just another game. But try and blur out the noise. What was the, what, how was the experience like? It was amazing. The whole, the approach, the day, the stadium, the, the fans, everything was a, a true, true spectacle that I'll never forget. Did you draw the score, the goal mm -hmm. in that particular final? What was the feeling like knowing that this was your second time of approaching the Champions League title? Bayern were looking like favourites mm -hmm. to win it till the penalty. 
Yeah, absolutely unbelievable. And what a story for Didier as well. I think he was leaving the club yeah. after that season. So to do it in that moment and how he, you know, scored the goals, the vital goals, and the performance was it was like a story, almost like a a movie. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. um, about Michael Lisson, he played a vital role in that particular lead up to the final. How was it like playing with Michael Lisson, training, his character and everything? Amazing. I think when I was young, coming into the squad, as a person, he helped me a lot. Okay. Um, you know, just a nice guy to be around him, very accommodating to the youth, which is, you know, it's very, you know, it's a, it's a it's a big moment when you start to step up and play with them, especially because he was such a, you know, a legend and such a big player in the sporting sense. So, yeah. Any funny, memorable time with Michael Lisson at Chelsea? Um, every day, every day is fun <laughs> with Mikey. He's always, you know, he'd be a warrior on the pitch, but a big, you know, laughable character in the dressing room. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But looking at Chelsea, it's been a decade since. Uh, you won that particular Champions League. Um, Tukio came in and they managed to do that. Now, looking at the current phase under Todd Bully and Mauricio Pochettino, do you think the Champions League might be in sight for the next five years? Five years, definitely. I think five years, definitely. I think understanding they're in a transition. So, yeah, it'd be an interesting couple of years. But I'm sure if they develop in the right way and manage to really fulfil their potential, the players that they've bought, mm. then hopefully from yeah, year, year two, year three, year four, they can start to challenge again. Yeah. And aside Michael Lisson, did he get to play with another Ghanaian player, Daniel Amati? Yeah, Dan, super <laughs> nice guy as well. Yeah. Yeah. Dan, yeah. Great warrior. He's in mm. uh, Turkey now. Yeah. 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 Uh, aside these two players, Maybe any other player? No, it's a well back in the Villa. youth teams. Aston Villa. Um, um, Jordan Ayew, you never get to, no, to play with him? No. It was after he came? No, yeah. Oh, okay. Played against him a few times, both of them. The but brothers. these days, one of the players who play for one of your former clubs has come out in Suleimana. What yeah. are your impressions yeah. of him? Uh, yeah, a very good player. I think he's a very good player and a uh, fantastic asset for Southampton to have. and. I'm sure they were lucky to hold on to him. Um, I think he had a tough start with a new manager as well to his uh, life there. But I think him, if you look at Southampton's results of, of late, yeah. him coming back into the team seems to have had a positive impact on the results. So I'm sure he's a very dangerous player that Southampton need to you know, utilise. Mm. Now, with you as a player, did you combine football with your books, we, you, getting to know that you probably had attended Harvard University. How did you manage to do that? So that was through lockdown, actually. It was an online course. Oh, OK. So I wanted to, while I had time, I'm always trying to stay ahead of the curve in life and, and know that football's not going to last forever. <laughs> so I, I used that moment to take a course in alternative investments uh, through Harvard in the online space to get to know the investment landscape because ultimately I want that to be part of my future going forward. Okay, so it's not only about football but mm. you have other portfolios? Yeah, where portfolios where we can invest across the landscape of Africa, across all different sectors that are underpinned by a, a philosophy of helping communities as well. How can we invest in things that can help people? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now before we wrap up, let's talk about Eden Hazard, your uh, former Chelsea teammate, recently re retired. Any special words for him, Eden? Yeah, Eden was uh, you know, one of the best players I've, I've ever played with. Superhuman, and you know everybody says maybe it's too soon. You know he, he should keep going, but his career has been. It, Amazing, you know, mm. and to finish at Madrid, not many people can say that. So, yeah, yeah, he's uh, had a fantastic career and deserves everything. Mm. Now, who would you say is your favorite African player of all time? Mm. I'm sure, you've seen Eto Droga. So you've many, seen... yeah, we have so many, which is amazing. And, you know, African players are 
done so much in history. Um, I think something a bit different. I was very young watching, so it didn't really encapsulate all of my life, um, football life. But I think studying the game and thinking of business and moving from sports into the business of sports and investing, um, slightly different trajectory, but the principle is the same. I think you have to look at people like George Weir. George Weir. Yeah. If you think, you know, he had the humility to retrain, relearn. Yeah. And now he's uh, leading the country. So yeah. he's, um, you know, it's a bit of an inspiration like that, how you can be something and then retrain to establish yourself as a leading mm. person in another field. Yeah. So yeah, it's a bit of an inspiration for people to look at. Oh, okay. Now, when it comes to Ghana, who would be your ultimate? I'm not going to say because if they reach Michael, there is Suleiman who came to uh, Portmouth, yeah, later came to yeah. um, um, what's their name, Sunderland. Asamajan yeah. also played yeah. for Sunderland. Then we've had the mm -hmm. Ayu brothers. Yeah. Recently, you have Thomas Pate mm -hmm. and Tony Yevois and the likes. Who would you say your favorite Ghanaian player is? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who's a good one? You say you bow Tony Yeboah. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Imagine everyone wanted to score his goals, right? Till <laughs> date, what, what, what was the? Um, how does the uh, Leeds community treat Tony Yeboah till date? For yeah. those in Ghana, we don't know how. I'm not sure, sure but we're gonna go with Tony Yeboah because, throughout my whole youth and still to this day, there's no better goal than scoring a crossbar and in, right? And I think he's uh, his goals. They encapsulated all of my youth trying to rec recreate his goals. Yeah. Now, if you get to create your own five a side team, mm -hmm. give us five players who will be there. Oh. <laughs> Stop off the top, uh, <laughs> let's say. Mm. I would say mm -hmm. Eden Hazard for mm -hmm. sure. Um, in goal, you know, Peter Cech, mm -hmm. I'd say. It's going to be Chelsea, so I might sound biased, but you have to understand yeah, that yeah, the, the players that were there, yeah, it was yeah. uh, very tough to, uh, to beat. So, yeah, so I'd say John Terry, okay. um, Eden Hazard, Peter Cech, uh, uh, Drogba. Okay. trying to think outside of it now. Mm. In a second. Um, it's probably Rooney. 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 Oh okay, so, yeah. okay, okay. That's nice. Now since you're in Ghana we have to do this. Um what's your favorite food or what food have you tried so far? I tried the jollof last night, but authentic jollof for the first time, yeah. And uh, amazing. I love spicy food, so it, it will go with any dish for me forevermore now. <laughs> so you're going sure. to take back home? Everywhere, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but have you ever listened to any Ghanaian or African music? Do you know any Ghanaian musician? Um, yeah, I do. I've got lots on my phone, but I need to, uh, by name. Um, Stone Boy. In Ghana, we have Stone Boy. Shatawale, we have Sarkodie. I'm gonna, I'm uh, gonna Black Sheriff rings a bell. Yeah, I need to. I've probably got them on my phone. I'll message you. I'll send you the ones I have later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But your last words for um, foot, young footballers in Ghana and everyone. What would be your last words? Stay focused. That is it. Stay focused and uh, enjoy the process. All right. So that's. Ryan Bertrand, the former Chelsea player who won the um, UEFA Champions League with them as far back as 2012 and had the opportunity to play with AC and he's talked a lot about the Black Stars and also what he'll be doing here in Ghana and more and even said that his favorite food is jollof. Well, it's been a great time with him here on Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Joseph Adamafio. Thanks for doing the watching. See you another time.
Thank you.